Oh, lingering resentment. Kriemhild for some time. However, when she finally confessed, her responded harshly. Now Kriemhild passes by. I see. Hey everybody, welcome back to my Tyrion Lannister Crusader Kings 3 Let's Play. I don't know what part this is, doesn't really matter. Let's dive in and get playing. All right, so here we are as the Duke of Upper Burgundy. And the last gameplay, we went through a number of kings and solidified the kingdom of Burgundy into most of Italy, half of France, and the entirety of Lotharingia. What I'm trying to do is get a claim on Neuchâtel and Bern both, because I want to have them. And I'm also hoping for a son to be born, as opposed to just having seven daughters. Making acquaintances, Cersei seemed to enjoy our latest feast immensely. She got along well with everyone she spoke to, even the adult guests. Well, this Cersei is turning out to be much nicer than the other one was, so we can make her gregarious, which is a really good trait, plus two diplomacy and a bunch of positive modifiers. Or we can let her get greedy, which would send me over a mental break limit, which yeah, I don't want to. So uh, as weird as it is, we're going to have Cersei be gregarious. And if we check my intrigue tab here, we can see that I'm swaying Bjorn Frith. He's at plus 55 now, so he's already endorsing me. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. So we don't have any schemes in progress right now at all. And we just got a perk for the uh, intrigue lifestyle. So what I want to do, though, since I've filled out the schemer tree, I don't have much interest in going so far in seducer. And Torturer, eh, I don't really care too much about that one either. I want to switch Tyrion's focus. So I want to switch it over to the learning focus. We won't get a perk to spend this time, but we will next time. I want to take the scholarship focus because of the plus three learning, but also because of the plus 15 development growth. It's going to help the counties grow that much faster. So that's always a good thing. And then we'll go back and uh, take Dreadful over here, which gives us a 30% Dread gain. So what I'm trying to do is save up a bunch of gold so I can start raising some men-at-arms regiments. I've only got one so far, and it's only 200 men. It's not very positive. I don't like that. It's a little uncomfortable. What we can probably do, since we have 56 golds, we can create a single regiment of bowmen. I want to do this, so I'm going to do this. It's going to be 100 men, which is nice, but it's also going to counter skirmishers, which are basically light footmen. Yeah, to the impressive Tyrion. I have prowled through the documents, both ancient and of less certain provenance. I finally have enough material to make the case that you are the rightful lord of the county of Neuchâtel. All that's missing is one little bribe. Well, that's really funny that it would fire just after I spent all of my gold. So we're going to have to say, no, I can't. Because if I go 66 gold in debt right now, it's going to take me years to get out. So we're not going to do that. All right, so we have the size one of three bowmen, and it's reinforcing. And King Herbert is being attacked by Duke Lambert, or Duke Lambert. So let's take a look at this, this battle here. So it's an independence war. And then the Lotharingian claim on East Francia is also going on, and it looks like we're going to take that bit of land as well. So my king is going to be very, very powerful soon. This war is almost over. So I think what that means is if that, that war ends in our favor and we gain all of East Francia, I might have to murder the king. Yeah, that would make us a really big power. Good luck, my liege. If we look at the decisions, we can see that we don't have a whole lot going on right now. Oh, lingering resentment. Kriemhild for some time. However, when she finally confessed, her responded harshly. Now Kriemhild passes by. I see. Ah, childlike vices. She keeps the trait vengeful. Yeah, let's do that. A well-organized court. Every courtier gained ten opinion of me. Ah, oh, thank you, Kriemhild. My wife is great. Duchess Creamhild is pregnant. Beautiful. And Catholicism's fervor was decreased by 10 because Archbishop Adelwyn is sinful. <gasps> he's a drunkard. Oh, he's a drunkard and he's vengeful. That, that's, that's disgusting. I wonder if we could murder him. 52 to 67. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. He is sinful. I bet we can get some agents. Ah, uh, looks like he's ready to go ahead and claim me as Lord of Neuchatel again. That's going to put me 25 in gold, 25 gold in debt. 25 gold in debt is going to take me 10 months to work off. No, not yet. Keep going. Try again. The tourney day. The sun is shining and peasants are milling about at the tourney hosted by my wife. Well, thank you, Creamhild. All my knights cheer as Duchess Creamhild announces the tournament in their honor. And for once, I get to simply sit and watch. 
I'm not going to spend an entire tourney day stuck to a throne, however. So I too cheer my knights, and every knight gets 20 opinion of me for eight years. Or I can say this day is an hour honor, my dear, and get 75 prestige, which is useless. I'll take the opinion. And it looks like King Herbert won, and now look at the size of Burgundy. Yep, I think he's going to reform the HRE. At least I really hope he does. That's, that's fun. We might have some interesting stuff going on here. So we already have a faction. And uh, let's see. It's independence. Wow. That's a lot of people who want independence. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens there. That is kind of what happens when you conquer so much land that quickly. Insistence. Creamhild for some time. However, when she finally confessed her, responded harshly. Creamhild ever as doggedly. However, I don't know if Creamhild's well. If one fails at first, all one can do is try again. She keeps the traits stubborn. Sure. Let's take a look over here. What's going on? Aquitaine has been formed. Oh, well, looks like I gave birth to yet another daughter. Ah, uh, Caesarea. She's an intelligent dwarf. That's a good name. It's like Circe, but different. So it looks like King Carloman of Aquitaine and King Louis the Stammerer. So yeah, King Charles the Bald died. The Age of the World. I've been studying the ancient religious texts and the writings of scholars, and they all seem to agree that the world will end 6,000 years after its creation. By my calculations, we are less than a century away. However, my bishop, Bjorf, urges me to keep it to myself. Leave it to the clergy and avoid panic. What if your calculations are wrong? Everyone deserves to know the truth, and I get some prestige, spend some piety, and get some experience. Meh. A reasonable point, 25 experience, 250 church bucks, and some other stuff, and stress, and boo. Or I gain 100 experience and consult with more priests. Well, that seems to be the least offensive option, so we're going to go that way. Grant Vassal. Good tidings. I have decided to make Count Adelgaz of Bern your vassal. Oh, really? This guy hates me. Yeah, okay, take it, sure. That saves me the effort of having to conquer the land, I suppose. He invites me to a feast at his court in Bern. Oh, I don't think so. I hate you. No, no. I decline the invitation. And immediately we're going to plot to murder you. We're going to check and see if we have any agents who would like to join us here. Main gold. If we give him a bribe of 56 gold, it's going to max out our ability there. So that's great. Cersei comes of age. Well, let's see. With an excellent grasp of all manners of etiquette and understanding of all kinds of entertainment and the eloquence to go with it, she will have little trouble navigating a life at court. Well, let's see what kind of husband we can find. Cersei. I'm going to search the spouses, and I'm an absolute sucker for inheritable traits, so we're going to look at those first. Now, Cersei, I imagine, would probably want a beautiful man, or an intelligent man, or a combination of both. Let's just scroll through these traits here and see if we can find someone that has more than one. Well, he's Herculean, but he also has lover's pox. We don't we don't want that. Down here, I did see some geniuses. Where did they go? There they are. He's also 56, and he is also 56, so that's not going to work. And we've got Baron Frugin of Bitola, who is Herculean. That's congenital. I do like that. So pure-blooded congenital children. Oh, wait, no. We need a matrilineal. So matrilineal marriage... To, oh boy. Well, I tell you what. Let's go with Etienne, who is going to be a handsome man. We'll send the proposal for a congenital, a congenital marriage. That's not what we're doing. It's a matrilineal marriage. And it says that the powerful vassal is expecting a council position. I don't care what Count Adelgaz of Bern wants because I want him dead. And I can create the Duchy of Transgerania, which I'm not going to because I have nine gold. And it's a good thing Etienne accepted my offer of marriage to my daughter. He is at minus 29 with me. That's fine. I don't care. A cask of wine. Prince Archbishop Adelwyn will attend a local celebration in Besancon. And I happen to know that he is a bit of a wine aficionado. I could lure him into the cellar of my temple for an exclusive tasting and then make sure that he never walks out again. Let's do that. This will be easy. It's a 52% chance of doing it. I can lose 10 stress, but there's a 33% chance of it being discovered. Well, let's give it a go. Oh, so Prince Archbishop Adelwyn followed me willingly into the cellar, drunk on merriment and wine. After many glasses of fine wine, he fell readily asleep, but before I could finish walling up the exit, some servants walked in. 
my lord and Prince Ad Archbishop Adelwyn and a half finished wall shutting him in. Oh no, I'm, I'm just doing some renovating. So it ends my scheme and I gain 14 dread. Well, that's a bummer. All right, we've got an available perk to spend here. And let's see, we can go with pedagogy, which my wards will get skills or scientific, which my cultural fascination project progress goes up by 35%. I think I'm going to go that route. I don't much care about the church bucks. All right, so we can see that Upper Burgundy has, has gained two, uh, two counties. And hopefully within a few minutes, we're going to go ahead and take out that count who doesn't like me. Stone of Glass. As I struggle to make out the tiny letters in the scroll before me, I feel a headache building once again. Why do scribes insist on writing such small symbols? I squint and try again. Nothing short of a miracle. With the aid of a stone of glass, even old men struggling with bad eyesight could read with ease. Hmm. So, Beorforth, I require your assistance. He gets a weak hook on me. Nope. I need one of these stones. 50 gold? Nope. Sell everything which is impossible to read. 50 gold I gain and I lose 10 stress. Absolutely. It's my keep. I can designate a guardian for Lanny Lannister. Well, let's go ahead and do that myself. A new claimant for crying out loud. Of all the buffoonery I have ever seen, in Gao Zhan's inane efforts to improve my relations with my neighbors, my good-for-nothing chancellor has officially acknowledged Dauphin Gilhem's claim to the county of Bress. You're supposed to make me friends, not enemies. So what I'm going to do immediately is fire Gao Zhan from being my chancellor. Get the hell out of here. Maybe I should hire Hartmut to do it. Let's hire Hartmut and send him in there. Can't possibly be any worse than that eggplant I had before. Gao Zhan d'Aubergine. You know what? I should get you a matrilineal marriage and I should send you off somewhere. You're going to matrilineally marry this lowborn nobody. Enjoy it. To the impressive Tyrion, I accept your marriage proposal. Of course you do. <coughs> All right, so at any minute now, the Duke of Viennois is going to declare war on me. Oh, an assassin. The time has come. My agents are in place. One of them will pay the assassin the very night the deed will happen. Another will ensure the wall is unguarded. A third will leave a subtle trail of candles to count Adelgaz's bedchamber. Everything is in place. 91% chance that it works? Do it. Oh, the assassin performed spectacularly and Count Adelgaz of Burn is finally dead. Thankfully, my involvement in the crime remains unknown. I do love surprise visits. So that's great. So I tell you what we're going to do is his son went ahead and took it, Count Eberhard, who hates me as well. He wants a seat on the council and he's not getting one. What he's going to get is a murder scheme in his face. So we can hire Mangold again. He must have something against this family. Ill, my mortal body. Oh no, I'm sick. Uh, is he my physician? He is, okay. Let's see, is it too late for caution? Would Tyrion do that though, or would he do no more than is necessary? No, let's do no more than is necessary. I don't see him taking unnecessary risks. Your fur 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 attributed my ailments to an unsound diet. To revitalize my body, he insisted I consume only raw vegetables and herbal teas for a week. So as not to tempt me, he confiscated my stash of treats. He never returned them. Bastard. Well, at least he doesn't have, like, the gluttonous or the, the stress eater trait, so at least he didn't eat my treats. The dietary restrictions turned out to be just what I needed. For now, the worst of my symptoms are alleviated, and the world seems a little brighter. Excellent work, Bor for 4444. Four, four. So if we take a peek over here at my schemes, we can see that the mo Yeah, I don't think Count Eberhard's gonna get out of this one. And Creamhild has come of age! Well, all right, let's see. She's displaying a thorough understanding of the flow of gold and the wanderings of people. She even expresses a remarkable creativity in dealing with these matters. Well, good. So she is not my heir. She is a pure-blooded dwarf. Let's find her a really good husband. Let's go ahead and marry her off to Baron Frusion. Enjoy your life, Creamhild, my daughter. And there's our first alliance. As my daughters come of age, I'll be able to get more and more alliances. Oh, and I am no longer ill. That is excellent. And it looks like Jarl Baskeg declared war 
and it is the Yillander Conquest of the County of Dithmarshan. I don't necessarily think that was a really good idea, but I'm not, I'm not that king. Every woman for herself. A forceful knock on the door clears every bit of drowsiness from my mind. Who disturbs a duke at this hour? My late night visitor is none other than Cersei. I have to speak with you privately, away from listening ears. I have discovered something very interesting. Cersei has uncovered a secret of Bor 4444. She is willing to share it with me if I let her off the hook. I swear, after this, you will owe me no longer, and I'll lose my house head hook on my daughter. Uh uh. Uh uh. I don't think so. You think you can make demands? Tell me or else. So she would lose 30 opinion of me, and she has a 33% chance, 0.33%, repeating, of course, percent chance of being wounded. And I would rather have you in my pocket than him. She loses 10 opinion of me, and I gain 10 stress. Well, I I don't want to lose my house head hook, so we're just going to have 10 stress, and she's going to lose 10 opinion, because I guess that's just going to have to be the way it goes. And we're going to sway her. I don't care about swaying me in gold. I didn't realize my relationship with my daughter was so bad. My daughter and heir Cersei has given birth to a son. Well, thank you so much. Somebody in this family can at least have a son. Since the little one is part of the Lannister dynasty, he should be blessed with a good name. Theoderic Lannister? Let's keep that. Theoderic Lannister. May you go strong and wise. The time has come. My agents are in place. One of them will pay the assassin the... Oh, here we go with a trail of candles for Count Eberhard. And it's a 91% chance on this one as well. And down he goes. Yep. And nobody thought it was me. So that's beautiful. Which means now that Cant Countess Ermel is the Countess of Bern. And it looks like I'm not going to possess this land. Because it's going out of family, it seems, on the next generation. That's okay. At least they are vassals, and I, I'm okay with that. Rumor and speculation. My wife, Duchess Creamhill, gets to hear many things during her comings and goings at court. Lately, she has heard some very interesting stories about what my bishop, Bor444, does in the shadows. Well, this is very useful to know, Sunshine. Thank you, my dear. She doesn't look like much, but that's a great wife right there. And my scheme to murder Du Alexandros has been discovered. I didn't know I was plotting to murder him. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's too bad. Um, curses. We're going to keep it going, I guess. And who is this guy? Du Alexandros of Threakshin. Duchess Toma. Oh, that's, that's my lover's husband. Huh. Okay. Visions of the Divine. I beckon my bishop, Bjor 44444. To join me in the circle of brass orbs and candles arranged on staves throughout the dark room. The incense cloying the air to ward off the bad vapors makes our eyes tear up in little time. This is how, through the corner of our eyes, we will spot the inscrutable form of angels. However, BR444 soon takes pause. This feels wrong. These are divine beings, not meant for mortal eyes to see. My intentions are pure, I assure you. It's a learning challenge against BR44. It's a 66% chance I'll win. Uh, we can pick, you can leave, but one way or another, I will know, and I get 50 experience and he loses opinion of me. Or I can simply agree with him and say, yes, this is a fool's errand, if not a sin in itself, and I can gain stress. I can gain stress, and it may lead down a path of zealousness. I'm gonna go ahead and take the learning challenge because I'm pretty sure I can beat him. He was persuaded and I got the experience. Okay, so it looks like he has now succeeded in fabricating a claim on New Chatel. So that's pretty much the only way I'm going to get control of that county. So go ahead and see it done. I have to be careful declaring war myself. I can't revoke the title because we don't have limited crown authority. And I can't have limited crown authority because the Frankish culture does not have plenary assemblies. So if I go down here and I look at Frankish, he's currently studying Mott's. And we need plenary assemblies. So that's a bit disappointing. So I have, the, I have the claim, but I can't do much with it because I can't declare war on a vassal, but at least I have the claim. Du Alexandros of Thracation, Thraxion, has discovered that I am the mastermind behind the plot to murder him. You know, for being as good at freaking intrigue as I am, I, I get found out a lot in these plots. It's getting to be a bit ridiculous. There must have been a misunderstanding. So I gain 14 dread and I lose my scheme. 
and he ends up hating me. And he, I can't believe it, but my lover ends up hating me. So I tell you what, we're going to go ahead and elope. She won't accept, huh? So I could kill her. I'm just waiting for some psychologist to watch one of my Let's Plays and then give me a call and just be like, hey, we need to talk. And we've got a new perk for the learning lifestyle. So planned cultivation is increasing development and county efficiency by plus 20%. I really like increasing development. Uh, the more taxes and happy people you can have in your counties, the better. And if we look over here, it looks like Aquitaine is starting to spread out a bit into West Francia. And Earl Wolfstan of La Marche has no ruler and he simply has one county. Huh, how interesting. That's very strange. I bet he'll get conquered pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and take a pause real quick here and scroll up and let's take a look at the world. Let's go start up here. We can see that Ireland is spread out into Iceland and so has the Nordriar. So it looks like the, the Norse and the Irish have taken over I uh, Iceland. Uh, Scotland is an absolute mess. Um, the Sudriar is expanding quite a bit. So it looks like the line of Ivar is forming some fun stuff there. Uh, Jorvik is also getting big too, so it looks like the white shirt did his his uh, his job over here. Uh, Wessex is staying where it is, so it looks like England might be Norse. Looks like Ireland might be Norse, and Scotland will definitely be Norse. So that looks like pretty fun. If we go over here and take a look at Scandinavia, it's an absolute mess. Yep, there's no Sweden, there's no Finland, yeah, there's there's no Norway, nothing yet. Yeah, that's an absolute absolute mess. Go over here a bit though. We can see that the Russian Norse are doing well in Gardariki. It's expanding up to the north a bit. Take a look here at uh, like Central Europe and, and Western Asia, and it's just Bulgaria has shortened up a bit, and Wallachia is not so big. Um, let's see, the Magyars are still hanging on kind of over here, and the Southern Norse over here doing all right as well. Kazaria is about Kazaria, that's about how it always looks. And the step area, I really don't know how this stuff should look. So I think it looks okay. Let me scroll down south here towards India and a little bit of China. I've never played this area either, so I don't know exactly how it should look. But it does kind of look pretty border gorish. Let's move west a bit over onto the Arabian Peninsula and such and take a look over here. We can see the Abbasids are spreading out a bit to the south, but they aren't getting past Egypt, it seems. The Tulanids are taking Egypt and they've got the Sinai. The Byzantines are still real small. And Africa is becoming kind of united with Ghana and Kano, kind of. And yeah, it looks like these tribes are spreading upward here too and the Idrisids are losing their, their hold on Morocco and areas. It looks like Spain is kind of a mess too. The Umayyads are being broken apart there. Valencia, the Sultanate of Valencia. Sultan Muhammad II. So, it looks like Burgundy might be one of the more powerful in the world right now. So that's pretty good. That feels pretty nice. And I think I'm going to go ahead with that and call it a day. Got quite a bit done. We gained a new vassal. Got a claim on one of his counties. Our king conquered a lot of known Europe and has formed a giant kingdom of Burgundy. Gave birth to another couple of daughters. No son yet, but we'll work on that. Creamhild is very, very fecund. Yeah. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like if you liked it. Comment down below on what you did like or let me know what you didn't like or anything like that. And go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be told when I upload new videos. All right, guys, have a great one. Bye.